Hello my dear geographers I hope everyone is keeping well so today in this class I am going to discuss the last chapter of class 9 ICSC that is natural regions though you know that in your revised syllabus this natural region has been cut down in very small parts so three basic natural regions we need to study Number one, it is equatorial region. Number two, tropical desert region, and number three, tropical monsoon region. So, before starting this topic, we should know what is natural region. Basically, a natural region refers to a part of the Earth's surface which has a comparatively high degree of uniformity. Uniformity means equality of structure. surface form and climate within it so basically a region where the structure of the region that means the shape of the region the surface form like what is actual surface and what is the climate all these things should be same therefore every natural region has a homogeneous unit in which the climatic conditions soil natural vegetations and the human activities are uniform now just compare the polar region obviously in the polar region the temperature is really really cool now the natural vegetation in very sparse no such kind of natural vegetations are found but in tropical region where the rainfall and temperature as well as the humidity are high different kinds of natural vegetations are found so if you are comparing this polar region and tropical region you will find that in polar region the people those who are living their life uh, leading process and the people those who are living in tropical region their life leading process both are different but in all equatorial regions people are having same lifestyle whereas in polar region all the people they are having the same lifestyle that's what it is very very important to understand that a natural region will have the uniformity within it right so basically the natural regions are uh, divided into different forms so we don't need to study very deep here directly we can go to the different kinds of natural region so today in this class we are going to study the equatorial region so first to understand any region we need to know the location basically the equatorial region extends between 0 degree to 10 degree north and the south of equator we all know that this 0 degree is depicting equator and 0 to 10 degree north to 0 to 10 degree south that is indicating the equatorial region now let's see what are the basic areas where this region can be found in asia so continents wise we will divide the region first in asia see here indonesia papua new guinea malaysia and the southern part of philippines all of these are having equatorial region next in south america the coastal land uh, low lands between the guinea and this brazilian highlands amazon basin and this coastal colombia now in africa zaire basin and the guinea coast in west africa so here if you will look you can find that equatorial region basically lies beside this equator okay now let's discuss about the climatic condition so here the climatic condition is very very interesting so the climate in the equatorial region is characterized by heavy rainfall and constant high temperatures throughout the year because this region lies in the torrid belt we know throughout the year the equator is getting direct sun rays okay so such sun rays have a high angle that is 90 degree during all the year and the days and nights are almost of equal duration throughout the year so basically two different characteristics we can find from this climatic condition number one the temperature is really really high and throughout the year it remains same and number two it is this region is having heavy rainfall 
Now precisely if you will see the temperature basically in this region ranges between 25 degree centigrade and 30 degree centigrade during the year. And the morning are very pleasant and sunny and the temperature then begins to rise. So in the afternoon time the sky is overcast with clouds. It prevents heat from being radiated back to the atmosphere. Because obviously when there will be cloud, the ray will not be able to radiate it back to the space. Therefore, the temperature at the ground remains very high. The nights are cool and the sky remains clear at night. Always remember one thing, cloudy sky indicates the high temperature at the ground. Whereas when the sky remains clear, the temperature will also fall. Now, what is the amount of rainfall? Now, the equatorial rainfall is of the convectional type of rainfall throughout the year. In the types of rainfall chapter, you have learned what is convectional type of rainfall. So, in the description box, I will give the link. So, you, if you want, you can check it. So, this rainfall ranges between 175 to 250 centimeter. And this is due to the vertical rays of the sun. Intense heating of land and radiation of heat into the atmosphere. Now some of the mountainous areas like those in Indonesia and also in Africa, this receives the orographic or relief type of rainfall. Now this question may come like Indonesia and Africa. Though they are having some mountainous areas, so why the rainfall is not convectional there why it is orographic always remember when a region is having mountains or any other highland then obviously this region will receive relief type of rainfall or orographic rainfall if still it is in equatorial type of region now the temperature and rainfall are also modified by the relief now for an example mount kilimanjaro Okay, the highest mountain peak in Africa, despite being close to the equator, has peaks covered with snow throughout the year. Okay, why? Because of its high elevation. Now, we all know that the regions, those who are quite uh, close to the equator, uh, why there will be some snowfalls and all? Because if the elevation or height is more, then obviously this region can experience this snowfall. Okay, now let's discuss about the different seasons. So basically there is no winter or a dry season. Due to small differences in temperature, the region has a hot and wet season throughout the year. Now the another major point is the natural vegetation. So the equatorial region has a dense forest cover known as tropical rainforest or selvas. Selva is a regional name. In the Amazon basin. Now the foreign forest canopy, low altitude areas near the equator in South America, especially in Amazon lowland, Central and West Africa. The vegetation in this forest shows four distinct layers. This is very very important. Number one emergent layer, number two canopy, after that it is understory and then last forest floor. So basically the emergent layer at the edge of the forest has trees like Kapok, Mehugini which reach up to the height of over 50 meters. Now next canopy, it is the top layer formed by the crowns of trees which grow close together. The canopy blocks out the sunshine and wind as well and next layer is the understory. Since the light is blocked by canopy, the plants have longer leaves or larger leaves to maximize the light to be absorbed. Now the bottommost layer is forest floor. Okay, it has some ferns and shrubs as well as some climbers. So what are the main trees in this region? Ebony, mahogany, now then green hurt, rosewood, ironwood, rubber, all of these are major trees. Now the last point is human adaptations. So basically in the equatorial regions, the primitive people practice the hunting and gathering activities 
whereas advanced one practice shifting cultivation in the clearing of for this shifting cultivation crops like tapioca then yam bananas uh, maize are grown so many plantations have been established in the equatorial regions especially in sumatra java malaysia central Af america etc the most outstanding of these plantations are natural rubber and coca so malaysia and indonesia are the leading producers of natural rubber in the world accounting for more than a third of the world production cocoa is most extensively cultivated in west africa ghana nigeria and being the important producers other crops are found also that are Low, bananas, coconuts, coffee, then tobacco, pineapples, sago, spices, sugar, tea, etc. So this is all about the equatorial region. I hope this is quite clear and please try to understand the basic things. And from here, give reasons type question will also come. So study this process properly. If you will find any problem, you can Clear, clarify your doubts in the comment box. So, next day again I will come with a new topic. Till then, thank you and take care.